In the previous video, we looked at the principle of conservation of linear momentum. I showed you the formula. I also showed you everything that's behind me, how to get it, how to expand the formula, and we did a basic example. In today's video, I'm going to be going on to a past paper example, and let's jump right in. Remember, I give teacher tips throughout the whole video and more towards the end, so you don't want to miss that because I will show you how you can take your marks to the next level, how to avoid making mistakes, and yeah, just some teacher tips to get you ahead. Let's jump right in. Now over here, we can see a past paper question. Please remember grade 12s to always read the little bits of information before and after your picture because not everything's on the diagram. So we've got two trolleys P and Q held together by a compressed spring on a frictionless horizontal track. They give me the masses. Now the first thing that your brain should be telling you is that you cannot leave your mass in grams. Now this is one thing that I say to my students that I have in class that helps some of them, that when we are working in our physics topics, like momentum, Newton's laws, uh, work energy power, all of those things. We want our mass to be in kilograms. And think of physics, we deal with big things, big objects, cars, trucks, collisions, big things. So we can see. So we want kilograms, big units. When we do chemistry, we're working with small, microscopic things, tiny, tiny, tiny. We want our mass to be in grams. So when you see grams here in physics, your brain should be going, no, 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 no. We need to convert. So we'll do that in a second, but let's continue reading. So we've got when the trolleys are released, so they are held together by a, a spring. When they are released, it takes 0 0.3 seconds for the spring to unwind to its natural length. Trolley Q then, after that, moves to the right at 4 meters per second. Now, a few things that I want to, you to take note of. Obviously, we know we need to convert the mass. They are giving me time over here. And... The first question they're asking is state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Now, a teacher tip for you guys. When they ask you to state a principle or state a Newton's law or something like that, you are 90% of the time, maybe even more than 90% of the time, going to use that principle or use that law within the one of the up and coming questions. So they ask you to state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. And then they want the velocity of trolley P after the trolleys are released. We are going to use the principle of conservation of momentum to calculate the velocity. And that's your first hint that we're going to use the principle of conservation of linear momentum in 4.2.1 because they asked us to state it. However, from what you know about the principle of conservation of linear momentum, you should know that time is not necessary to, to do the principle of conservation of linear momentum. So you should know, think about momentum, think about impulse, think about all the things that I taught you. Look at the next question. Look at what they ask. They say, calculate the magnitude of the average force exerted by the spring on trolley Q. So what you know from the previous momentum videos in this playlist is we learned that F net multiplied by delta T equals delta P. And they are giving me time and they want average force they want this and we know masses and velocities and stuff so we can work our change in momentum so you can see here that 4.2.2 we're going to be using the impulse momentum theorem or f net multiplied by delta t equals delta p because they're giving me a time they want a force but in 4.2.1 they want a velocity we're dealing with two objects they asked me to state the principle it's kind of obvious that they want me to go ahead and use the situation that we learned about in the previous video. So let's first state the principle of conservation of linear momentum in words. So that would be your answer. The total linear momentum in an isolated system is conserved or remains constant or something like that. If you leave out the words total, if you leave out the word isolated, um, you will get marks deducted we will move we will minus marks from you okay you need to do it properly then they want the velocity of trolley p after the trolleys are released now what you need to do is first of all list your variables this is very helpful to list your variables so i'm going to say my mass of object p equals let's do the mass of object q over here now what did i tell you guys about the masses we need to convert it to kilograms one kilogram 
is equal to 1000 grams. So I need to divide this by 1000. So for P, we've got 0, 0,4 kilograms. And for Q, I've got 0, 0,6 kilograms. Those are my masses done. Now, if you read the situation again carefully, they say that the, the spring holds them together. They give you the masses. They say when the trolleys are released. Now, what that implies is that the trolleys are initially both not moving. The initial velocity of both trolleys are zero. Remember, they are attached by a spring. So what that means is that we can either do our principle of conservation of linear momentum formula like this one. Remember where you say the mass of object one times the initial velocity of object one. So this would be object P in our case. This would be object Q. This would be object P and this would be object Q. Remember this is initial. So it uses initial velocity. There you can see initial, initial. And this is final. So it uses final velocity. We can either do it like that or because we know that these objects were initially stuck together, we can do the situation that I have over here where we take the two masses and we put them in brackets because they are stuck together and they have the same initial velocity, which in this case was zero. But before we do that, let's carry on listing our variables. Then we've got trolley Q then moves to the right at four meters per second. So initially they're not moving, but then they say trolley Q moves to the right. So I'm going to take to the right as my positive direction. Now, because trolley Q moves to the right, I'm going to say my VF of trolley Q is four meters per second. Note how I will substitute that in as a positive because I chose to the right as positive. Please indicate what you choose as positive. They want then the velocity of trolley P after the trolleys are released. So they want the final velocity of P. I'm going to put a question mark over here. Now, how do we do this? Now, remember I told you we can either use the generalized formula or we can do the one where we first add the two masses together and then the after situation, they'll be separate. So over here, I have written my formula like this. My mass of P is 0 0.6. My initial velocity of P is 0. My mass of Q is 0. Point, sorry, that should be 0 0.4. My mass of P, there we go, 0 0.4. And then my mass of Q is 0.6. My initial velocity is 0. So remember what I told you is you could have taken your two masses, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6, and then multiplied it by 0. This and this, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter how you do it. I'm just going to leave it like the top one. Then my mass of P is 0 0.4. My final velocity of P is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to leave that as my unknown. My mass of Q is 0 0.6. My final velocity of Q is 4. Now what we do is we know that this side will ultimately equal 0. On our right-hand side, we basically got 0 0.6 times 4, which is 2.4. And over here, we've got 0 0.4 times final velocity of P. Now, grade 12s, what happens is we take the 2.4 over. It becomes a negative 2.4. We've got 0 0.4 times the final velocity of of p. Now, how do you get the final velocity of p by itself? Well, here it is multiplied by 0 0.4. So when we take it over, it must be divided by 0 0.4. So we've got our final velocity of p is negative 6. Because remember, negative 2.4 divided by 0 0.4 would be negative 6. Now, you never ever leave a vector's answer as a negative. Velocity is a vector. Take a look at what they asked us. They asked us to calculate the velocity of trolley P. Velocity is a vector. You never leave a velocity as a negative. So we're going to say, okay, cool. The final velocity of P is 6 meters per second. So we've rewritten it as a positive, which you must, must, must do. That's a massive teacher tip. And you can't just say 6 meters per second. You have to give me a direction. So remember, we chose to the right as positive. So this velocity would be going to the left. Now, our next question asks us for the magnitude of the average force. So they're looking for F net exerted by the spring on trolley Q. And remember, they gave us a time. So we know delta T is 0, 0,3 seconds. Now, because they asked about trolley Q, what I want you to do is just list what we know for trolley Q. So the mass of Q if we go back here, the mass of Q was 0 0.6 kilograms, 0 0.6 kilograms. Our initial velocity 
for Q, our final velocity for Q, we know those things. So remember, our initial velocity for Q was zero. Our final velocity for Q was four meters per second to the right. And remember, our right is our positive direction. Now, looking at all of these things, what formula do we know that incorporates F net? Because remember, we're looking for F net, but it also uses time because grade 12, they gave you time for a reason. It is extremely rare for them to give you a piece of information and for it not to be useful in some way. So them giving you time is a massive hint that you need to ultimately use this formula. F net delta T equals delta P. So the net force multiplied by the time that that force acts is equal to the change in momentum. Because they're asking about trolley Q, that's why I listed everything relating to trolley Q. And for change in momentum, we are ultimately going to be working out the change in momentum for trolley Q, because they asked for the force exerted by the spring on trolley Q. So how do I expand this formula? Well, F net we can't expand, delta T we can't expand, Delta P, we learned, remember in a previous video, that delta P, change in momentum, is equal to MVF minus MVI. That is on your formula sheet. And so is this. So I'm basically combining two formulas that are on my formula sheet. So instead of writing change in momentum, I'm writing MVF minus MVI. VI. It's very important to know what you're doing. And what you're doing is you're telling me that this is equal to this. So instead of changing momentum, you're writing the second line here, MVF minus MVI. Then we substitute. Our net force is what we're looking for. Our time is 0.3 seconds. Now, because we're looking for the average force exerted by the spring on trolley Q, the mass that we use for both of these M's will be the mass of Q. And the mass of Q is 0 0.6. The final velocity of Q is 4. Then we put a minus there because that's in our formula. Our mass is 0 0.6 and our initial velocity is 0. Just please remember to substitute your things in with the correct signs. What I've done here is I've worked out the right hand side. So 0 0.6 times 4 is 2.4 minus 0 because remember this term will be 0. F net multiplied by 0 0.3 equals 2.4. To solve for F net, you take 2.4 divided by 0 0.3, and I'm going to get 8. Now, you cannot just say 8. You need to tell me the unit. The magnitude of the average force is 8 Newton. Now, please, another tip, which is very, very, very useful, it can help save you time and stress, is if they ask for magnitude. You do not need to give me a direction. But if they ask you for just force, so if they said calculate the average force exerted, then you have to give me a direction. And what would the direction be? Well, it's a positive force, so the direction would be to the right. If you want to see more past paper questions like this, of me going through momentum or any section, please comment down below and let me know what you want to see. I hope this was helpful, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.